Hey, this is Professor Perez. In this video, we are going to work with square roots. But before we get started, we gotta get out Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, let's get started. Right there. What number do we square to get 16? Well, there's actually two numbers that we square to get 16. Positive four, four squared is 16. But also negative four squared is 16 because negative four times negative four is a positive 16. Now here's a different question. What is the square root of 16? This question is simply asking you, what do you square to get 16? And there's two possibilities, but square roots only give positive answers. So the square root of 16 is a positive 4 because 4 times 4 is 16. Now let's look at numbers that are classified as perfect squares. 0 is a perfect square because 0 times 0, 0 squared is 0. 1 is a perfect square because 1 times 1 is 1. 4 is a perfect square because 2 squared is 4. 9 is a perfect square because 3 squared is 9. 16 is a perfect square because 4 squared is 16. 25 is a perfect square because 5 squared is 16. 36 is a perfect square because 6 squared is 36. There's obviously a lot of other perfect squares. Now let's find the square root of 36. What positive number do you square to get 36? It's 6. Square root of 49 is positive 7 because 7 squared is 49. Square root of 144 is 12 because 12 squared is 144. Square root of 64. What number do you square to get 64? It's 8. 8 squared is 64. Square root of 100 is 10 because 10 squared is 100. Square root of 10. 10 is not a perfect square. So to evaluate that square root, you need a calculator and you'll have to round off your answer. In this case, square root of 10 is 3.162 rounded to the nearest one thousandths. Now let's go back and look at the Pythagorean theorem. Remember, this is a formula that's used to find the missing side lengths of a right triangle. So here's a triangle here. The formula is c squared equals a squared plus b squared, where c represents the hypotenuse, the longest side of the right triangle, and a and b represent the legs of the triangle. So here we're asked to find the side length a, one of the legs. So there's our formula, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. We will replace c with the length of the hypotenuse, which is 13, the longest side length, and don't forget to square it. And this is equal to a squared plus our other leg which is five inches in length, and we'll replace that with b, or replace b with that, and we square that. Now, 13 squared, 13 times 13 is 169, equals a squared plus five squared is 25. Now we have to solve for that variable term, a squared. So we need to subtract 25 from both sides. 25's cancel on the right, leaving us with a squared on the right-hand side, and 169 subtract 25 is equal to 144. So a squared is equal to 144. So what number do you square to get 144, Charlie? Well, that's right. So you can take the square roots of both sides, and you would get 12 equals a. And that's the same as a equals 12. So that's one way of doing it. Now let's look at some expressions that have radicals or square roots. The symbol for square root is called a radical sign. Here we have square root of 4 plus square root of 9. What's the square root of 4, Charlie? 2. And the square root of 9? 3. Very nice. And so we add and we get 2 plus 3. Now remember in Five. our order of operations, the first category was parentheses and other grouping symbols. We have parentheses and remember we had absolute values and now we have another grouping symbol called square roots, these radical signs. So the radical signs are in the first category they have to be evaluated before you do exponents, multiplication and addition, multiplication and division, and also addition and subtraction. Here we have square root of 16 subtract square root of 25. We have to evaluate the square roots before we perform the subtraction. Square root of 16 is 4, square root of 25 is 5, and now we have 4 subtract 5, and by now I hope we know that 4 subtract 5 is a negative 1. Here we have 3 times the square root of 64, subtract 2 times the square root of 49. When you have a number in front of a radical sign, it means multiplication. But we have to evaluate the radical 
or square root, before we multiply. So square root of 64 is 8, square root of 49 is 7, and let's bring down our work. Notice we now have 3 times 8, subtract 2 times 7. Now we perform the multiplications before we perform the subtraction. 3 times 8 is 24, 2 times 7 is 14, we subtract, 24 subtract 14 is 10. Let's go to this next problem. Here we have the square root of 25 ninths plus the square root of 81 sixteenths. Well, you have a fraction underneath the radical sign. What's the square root of 25, Charlie? 5. And what's the square root of 9? 3. So the square root of 25 ninths is actually 5 thirds. What's the square root of 81, Charlie? 9. And the square root of 16? 4. Very nice. So the square root of 81 sixteenths is 9 fourths. Makes sense because 9 fourths squared, 9 fourths times 9 fourths, will be 81 over 16. Now we can perform our addition. But remember, when you add or subtract fractions, they must have the same denominator. Here our LCD is 12. So the 5 thirds, you have to multiply top and bottom by 4 over 4, and the 9 fourths by 3 over 3. Performing the multiplication, we get 20 twelfths plus 27 twelfths, which gives us a final answer of 47 twelfths. That's it for now. We'll see you again soon.